Hello, viewers. I'm SB, and welcome to Songs of Conquest. Um, this is a game that I've had my eye on for a little while, waiting for it to, uh, to reach 1.0, and it seems like it's pretty close, but also it's pretty on sale right now. So if you're interested, if what you see here tempts you, um, feel free to you know, pop over to Steam and get a good deal on it. Um, but yeah, I just, I've been looking for a new strategy game to play, and this thing has a vibe that I find very appealing. The sort of the, this particular kind of pixel art on the 3D environments and stuff. Um, the game that people most often compare this to in the Steam reviews and in the Steam forums and stuff is Heroes of Might and Magic. And this is kind of a uh, kind of a blind spot for me. I've never played any of the Heroes of Might and Magic games. It's sort of all slid right by me. So I'm very eager to see exactly what that means. I don't really know exactly what kind of gameplay we're getting into here, aside from the fact that it seems to be turn-based. It seems like there's some, there's some tactical stuff going on. So without further ado, let's just start a new story campaign and find out together, shall we? Uh, now I know they have a um, they have a fourth campaign that is coming out with the 1.0 patch. Uh, we're just going to start with the first song, the Song of Stoutheart. Cecilia Stoutheart, the young Baroness of the Barony of Stoutheart. I guess that makes sense. Must face enemies within and without to hold on to her power and protect her people. Stoutheart will stand. Probably. What else do we got going on here? Rask of South Creek Flats and a small band of Rana. And then also there's the Barony of Loth, which has a real undeadly kind of vibe. This is the thing I... The vibe I get here is that this is going to be like human knights or whatever. And then here we got some kind of like swamp monster stuff going on. And here we have the cool undead. I don't know why developers always feel the need to do this. You have all kinds of like cool stuff in your setting and you're like, well, at first let's show them the stuff that's the most boring. Maybe I'm going to be proven wrong here. But like, if you have zombies and swamp monsters, you lead with the zombies and swamp monsters, right? I don't know, maybe it's just me. Uh, so a young Cecilia Stoutheart rose to Baroness after the untimely death of her father, when ore shipments from Barksburg's rich mines go missing and rumors of bandits are brought to the new ruler, Cecilia leads a small force to investigate the missing resources. Sure, I love doing that. Uh, I Let's leave it on fair until we have any idea at all what that means and get started. For real though. Swamp, if, if, if there are cool swamp monsters, I do think you should start with those. It might just be, you know, humans in the swamp. Cecilia Stoutheart, the new Baroness of the Barony of Stout, they really want to lay this information on you real thick. They do not want you missing <laughs> that she is the Baroness. Uh, all shipments of stone from this region have stopped, and she was determined to find out why. She suspected an uprising of bandits and peasants and had already sent troops to the region to restore order. Okay, we are seeing an awful lot of currencies up in the top right, and a mini-map has definitely got an RTS kind of vibe to it at the moment. So right-click to set a destination, use right-click to, to confirm and move, left-click is for inspecting things like this. That's a source of power. That's a source of knowledge, I guess. I mean, we're going to get something out of it. So do I have listed around here anywhere like a number of movement points i can't inspect my character more closely let's execute this and see okay it looks like this thing there it is death comes to all some sooner than others we got xp for uh, learning about death apparently for the first time okay so we have we have this many movement points left and when i mouse over a tile does it tell me it does not tell me directly how many points it will take to move over that tile We'll learn, I'm sure. This old milestone shows the way, plus two movement to this turn. Cool. The ground's a little noisy with, like, doodads, which does make it kind of hard to tell what's actually, like, items and what isn't, because, like, this looks like it could be a thing. This is almost certainly uh, relevant to the story, in addition to being a source of riches. Sort of a cold-hearted way to think about it. All right, so I guess that is a next turn kind of thing. Do we have a character sheet or anything? Okay, I have five rangers and five footmen. I'm guessing our character here is representative of a stack of troops. 
Uh, yep, thank you. I kind of have kind of had the idea there. I want to play with my character sheet. Unlocks the ability to bring three troops with you in your army, plus three command. Troops gain melee resistance. Okay, we have some basic stats that all look pretty much like, you know, you can, you can eyeball those and see what they do. Okay, cool. Do we know spells? Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. All right, we're not going to worry too much about all this right now, but yeah, that's cool. I'm happy to see systems. Y'all know how I feel about systems. All right, what's up with this commander? The dead commander wore stout heart colors and the distinctive sign of the Corvus Reserves. Stolen ore was one thing, but an uprising against Stoutheart troops was more serious. An old artifact is found on the body. Uh, a dagger with, pl okay, plus one offense. Do love to offense. And also some cash. Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm picking. I can, I can trade the dagger out. Well, I mean, I guess for the moment, you know, a knife is a good idea. Okay, cool. And that's a 20% increase to our total. Like, plus one seems fairly significant. Uh, we could go check out the lake. I think probably just back on the path, yeah? What's going on over here? It's funny that that cart was such a good source of riches, considering it was already looted. There's some kind of spooky stuff going on up here. No way to it for the moment, though. A tribute to creation. Uh-oh. Some wounded soldiers appeared from the forest and snapped to attention. This was Cecilia's Corvus Reserves, and they had recently seen combat. Okay, I got a little nervous because there's green in this guy's uniform, and there's not a lot of green in my outfit. So I, di I did not read him as being one of ours initially. Hail, Baroness. The Corvus Reserves await your command. Lieutenant, you've seen combat. What is the situation and status of the mines? Our scouts detected some hostiles about, my lady. The gold mine to the south has been seized by rebels. We also encountered an unexpectedly well-armed force at Flint Hills to the west. We took heavy casualties and were forced to retreat. Okay, so we're completely surrounded by, by heavily armed enemies, is what you're saying. How well-armed? Oh, these aren't peasants with tools and knives. They have crossbows and swords, and bannerless knights ride with them. Hmm, this is no peasant uprising. Someone thinks me weak and seeks to take advantage of my father's death to steal more than a few shipments of ore. We must uphold the laws and show them the error of their ways. Gather the troops. We march for Flint Hills. Okay, uh, decide what troops you want to move to your wielder. So, okay, we're being offered rangers and more footmen. I mean, I can just... Can I not just... Throw these all together? Okay, no, these, the, each one of these is a full slot worth of people. Um. Oh no, okay, can I, can I get it to... Yeah, just merge. Yeah, okay, there we go. I must have been inaccurate with my clicking, that's all. Cecilia was no ordinary commander. She was a wielder and could draw upon the essence of her troops to weave mighty spells. Plus one creation essence for the next battle. Okay. So I'm I'm basically like blood magicking my my spells out of my own troops' uh, quote unquote essence, am I? Soldiers are camped here. Their camp can be pillaged for gold, or the soldiers can be recruited when they return. I would love some more soldiers. That sounds like a great idea. I don't know how many soldiers we're gonna take, uh, it's gonna take to clear this out. But I know we don't have access to all that many in the first place, so I hope this is enough. Okay, bonus movement for two rounds. That's handy. And I mean, yeah, let's do this. Threat level unknown. Let's find out more. So we'll walk, yeah, we'll walk up to here. Okay, troops, many militia. You know, honestly, what it's reminding me of right now a little bit is, um... Ah, oh, shoot, what was that game's call, game called? King's Bounty? 
something like very, very old, like early 90s, maybe. Stand down. This mine belongs to the Barony of Stoutheart. It belongs to me. <laughs> we will do no such thing. You'd be wise to get back to your castle and prepare for a storm. There's one coming, I gather. <laughs> the only storm gathering here is me. Prepare yourself. All right, she talks big. All right, we can rearrange troops before entering battle. Uh, are these, do we know what the, the meaning of these blue tiles is? I'm assuming it's just, you know, it's wet, so. Uh, range seven, deadly range four. It would seem like we probably don't want to start our rangers all this far back. Provided that these movement ranges are expressed in hexes. Oh, okay, the blue the blue tiles are the only ones we're allowed to start on. Yeah, something like this, a little a little bit closer. And we're definitely gonna do a manual battle, even though we probably don't have to with the threat level being simple. It's just, you know, we gotta learn. We gotta learn how to do the thing. Alright, right click to move and attack enemy troops. During battle, troops will take turns to act in an order based on each troop's initiative. Okay. So their archers have slightly worse range than ours. Troop can perform one ranged attack that needs to reload for a turn. Do mine, mine do not have, oh right, because they're crossbow wielding, right. Okay, so if we close up, So you do get bonus range from the high ground. Like, I wonder, do do we want to do anything? I might want to just stay put. Let my let my archer get up on the high ground as well. Um, so how do I? Do I just hit end turn with this guy? Yeah, I think that's I think that's really all I want. So two spaces to move. How's everybody doing? So at this point, they're all close enough to attack. There's no reason not to just rush them, right? I can't do much more than that, unfortunately. I could have at this barrel. That'll show it who's boss. Uh, and then I can't get into deadly range without... Closing in on them, right? Deadly range of five. One, two, three. So if I move up to here, you reduce your range damage for a turn by moving up. But you double your damage by getting into deadly range. So it's like definitely worth doing it. Okay, and we've acquired some momentum. Seems useful. As well, just finish that one off. Yeah, the crossbow is a um, the crossbow is a real bummer of a weapon in that uh, <laughs> that setup. Having to take an extra turn to reload is really unfeasible. Okay, so we did have one footman die, and we've leveled up. Troops get even more melee resistance. Troops get plus 10% damage or extra command slot. You know, we're not pressing our current command slots. I feel like, I feel like damage. The thing about offense is that it's a pretty solid defense most of the time. All right, this is my gold mine, right? It's, okay, we have taken it back. Killing those guys was not sufficient, but now we have income. Hell yes. I guess just, yeah, head back this way. We're supposed to go to the west and be angry about things. Let's get to it. I do, I really, really love the art style. The, 
all of the cosmetic stuff going on here is beautiful. As she touched the old tribute to order, she felt its essence empower her. That power would be needed in the battles ahead is probably what that said. Plus one order essence to the, for the battle. It's a source of power here at the old battlefield. Walking this old battlefield inspires caution. Okay, that makes sense. I could see why it might do that. So obviously we're going to want to go uh, around here instead of directly through the fires. So I'm worried that the, the camps are going to be where they where they still have troops, right? Well, potentially. We can see their troops are out on the out on the road as well. Let's, um, I guess... Okay, soldiers are camped here. Well, I would certainly love to have more soldiers. Welcome aboard, friends. These are not camps of our enemies. Uh, sure. Take on more archers. Do I want to split that troop? Well, I guess let me... Let me interact with this other camp first. Let's see what we're looking at in terms of total bodies before I go trying to make any divisions. Six footmen. Okay, well, bring aboard as many as possible. Got ourselves an archer's gambeson, which is just for me, not for my archers. <laughs> That's a shame. And, like, do I want to split the... I, I kind of think... How can I... No, don't disband this troop. How do I enter... There we go. I don't know if there are good reasons not to do that. I mean, like, if damage scales linearly, then all we're doing here is giving ourselves some versatility. Hopefully, that's roughly how it works. Hundreds of years ago, the Empire of Aurelia spanned the known world. Statues of the Empress can still be found across Arleon, and many folks uh, speak dreamingly of the golden years of Aurelia. Okay, initiative and troop movement. Also, just a boatload of gold. I don't even really know what we're going to use all this gold for. But it sure is accumulating. Okay, E is end turn. Barricades and a small force of armed peasants block the road west. You best be gone, young Stoutheart. Flint Hills are free lands now. Free? Free to be attacked by bandits and pillaged by other baronies? Who will protect the people? You? <laughs> Why not? As you can see, we are quite well armed. I can see that. But I caution you to think carefully before your next actions. Put down your weapons, answer my questions, and I'll be merciful. Or stand unlawfully against me and my sword will deliver justice. Now, who armed you? How dare you own weapons? <laughs> One of good intentions. I've seen Stoutheart Mercy when the head of old Lord Hammond was sliced off his body. Now turn back. Uh, it brings me no pleasure to turn my sword upon my subjects, but I sure was awfully quick to jump to it, wasn't I? Okay. So yeah, we probably want to be a little bit closer than that. Actually, I probably want my sword folk to be a little bit closer than that. Yeah, this is grim. This is a, <laughs> this is a bad idea. Surprise, the um, the royal classes. It's very difficult for them to be convinced that it's a good idea for peasants to be allowed to make their own decisions. All right, casting spells costs essence. Your troops generate essence every time they get a turn. Your wielder generates essence at the start of each round. Spells can become more powerful through reaching higher spell tiers and obtaining more spell damage power. Sure, who doesn't love a good chain lightning? Okay, so we know protection. Target friendly troop gets defense and spell damage resist. We need four in order to cast it, which we totally have. And this is the only spell we know. There are lots of spells. We do not We do not spell good just yet. Well, I see no reason not to just rush ahead. So deadly range is six from where we're standing. See, it's, it's interesting. We have, like, we have high ground in theory, right? Because we're not on the base level. 
But we don't have high ground relative to this guy. So is he in my is he in my deadly range? Like this, my ground is even higher than this man now. Okay, I should probably actually I should probably have actually cast protection. I just totally was like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. Um, but we are we are taking some beats here. Target enemy troop gets minus 25 damage. Bonus movement for one of our troops. I don't know that that's necessary at this point. Um, do we know what plus 10 defense actually means even? What is this? We're also, okay, slowly generating creation essence. So it's a little tricky, like in terms of actual damage reduction, I don't know what 10% defense gets you, or what 10, rather, what 10 defense gets you. Okay, we got some momentum here. That is not a real shot. Gosh, the range of archers in this game is wild. I mean, it feels like I should just take it, right? All right, they're done with their reloading. Fat lot of good it's gonna do them. So I only need to move forward one space. But I'm certainly not going for deadly range here. Why well, have a quality of arrows when you can work with quantity? Sort of a quality all its own, really. No survivors remain, but sifting through the ashes, some resources are found. Okay, wood and stone and whatnot. So we've got a pretty good sense of who Cecilia is as a person. You know, you raised royal, you're going to act royal, I suppose. Not necessarily my favorite um, character ever in fiction. A little bit more XP and some movement. Guess let's go see what's up with these knights. As Cecilia's troops approached Flint Hills, a force of well-armed soldiers wearing no Baronese colors came out to meet them. Knights, archers, you're no ordinary bandit force. Huh, I've always wanted to kill a wielder. Okay, so that's in-world terminology. Well, you won't be the first upstart knight I've defeated. Um... Yeah, few knights, few archers, few foot. I, I honestly don't know. I feel like we probably want to start... Like, for the footmen, I don't know if there's actually an advantage to being on the high ground, and we have no idea where they're, where they're going to start what anyway. Maybe it's even reasonable. Like, we usually get the advantage initiative-wise. Maybe this is aggressive, but I'm going to try it. Okay, their footmen are relatively fast. We do not have the essence necessary to do any any murdering. So this guy's outside of deadly range. I mean, number one, most important thing is kill that archer, right? This keeps us outside of horse range for the moment. <laughs> There's something that's extremely charming about the way these characters move. Uh, okay, we're going to quicken our footman here because I want the extra space of movement very badly. Just get in on this horse. So it seemed before... I guess we haven't really seen a lot of, like, melee-type enemies. There are absolutely retaliatory attacks. I don't know if there is an analog to, like, the attack of opportunity. Um, you know, if a, if a footman will punish enemies trying to move away from him. 
I sure hope so, because I was I was using him there like that was a thing. Uh, let's go ask the peasants what's up. But first, look at the adorable pig. That's a very charming little pig. A crowd of peasants, led by the village elder, came out to greet Cecilia as her force entered Flint Hills. I have defeated the rebels and restored Flint Hills to the protection of Stoutheart, as is my duty. Now, who among you will tell me what happened? I mean, a lot of them are still holding crossbows. Well, those knights and their soldiers appeared recently and armed all the local troublemakers. They seized our quarries and mines and started sending the shipments south toward Barkspur, where their patron awaits. And none of you stood against them. None of you sent word to the local warden or, or to Springhold. No, milady. We, we were afeard for our lives. We sent a messenger to Hope's Glade to warn them and ask for help, but the messenger never returned. This is all like this is definitely is stuff that happened. We're not just we're not just backfilling now because we don't want you to kill us too. <sighs> Remember this moment the next time you are made the offer of independence. I will always protect the barony from threats within and without. Join my forces and together we will restore order to this territory. We'll heed the call, we'll heed the call to arms of Stoutheart as we did for your father before you. Uh, there are able-bodied recruits in the peasant hut. Please, just not me, you know? All right, well, I don't know that we want to bring a bunch of peasants on board. Is this what we are reduced to? Okay, that's my farmhouse, obviously. I guess let's claim this too. I mean, this is what the money's for, yeah? So we just fill this up and we get a unit that produces order essence. Okay, rangers produce creation. Order's a pretty useful essence, that's true. Even if we don't necessarily value their fighting ability, it's good to bring troops with us because we can just drain their blood for magic. Also, holy hell, you can jam a lot of militia into one slot. Probably not, it's probably still not very good, unfortunately. Uh, the smith generously parts with her latest work, an archer's helmet. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. So, when we're upgrading the defense that is listed on our character. Yeah, a wielder's defense is passed on to its troops. A wielder's offense is passed on and added to its troops. Melee offense and ranged offense. So, like, even equipping a dagger does buff our bow units and stuff. Okay. That's an interesting way to conceptualize it. All right, love a good stone deposit. Probably ought to capture this one as well. All right, now that we've got all of the resources stolen from the town and almost everybody back on side, let's, let's see what's going on with their patron here. Plus five movement for a couple of turns. Very welcome. The milestone shows you the way. Can we... No, okay, we're going to have to go around. A small band of Cecilia's scouts stood waiting along the roadside. Lady Stoutheart, Corporal Greenwood... We've come from your warden, Vilja of Thorncliff, as per your command. Your troops are concealed at the forest's edge. Uh-oh, maybe I am going to wish I took that extra command slot. Corporal, this is not the forest's edge. These troops are camped within the Tenderwild. You may have disturbed the Fae. The fe Fae. Fae. The Fae, my lady? Surely the Fae are only a myth. Superstitions for the country folk. All of whom have very loosely attached jaws. That's why it's pronounced that way. Did my ancestors sign a covenant with mythological creatures? The covenant of leaves still stands, and we must make sacrifice or break the peace. Consider what we must forfeit to the forest beings to atone for your error. I await your judgment. My life is yours. Your death would serve no one. 
If I remember my history, there's an offering tree southwest of here. We'll try to reason with them. Join up, Corporal. I need all my troops, even the ones who make mistakes. I like how sort of unlikable they're making her. I like that the, this is good, strong characterization and she's not just like a cipher. And she's unlikable in the way that you would expect a noble to be. Okay, so these are just more rangers. Absolutely, join up. Okay, the Cairn has given us... See, that's his plus one offense, plus one defense, and it doesn't have a duration. Nope, it's just, it seems to be permanent. Okay, rad. So there's an offering tree around here somewhere. I guess that's one of these. Let's... Yeah, I guess let's head in that direction first. But obviously we're going to do it through this camp. Uh, more rangers and some gold. Can I take some of the rangers and some of the gold? I think it's... I think probably not. Alright, we'll just take the gold, I suppose. Uh, once again, take the gold. Also, let's steal their food. Uh, they were just boiling gold, apparently. Uh, welcome aboard, all two of you. Okay, if we hold alt, we get a sort of a clearer... I guess that tribute to chaos is what we're headed toward? Maybe, or maybe it's down here. Well, in any case, we're going to stop and see what's up with the tribute. The spores from these strange mushrooms fill the army with berserker rage. Nuked defense, but troop movement and murder power. <sighs> Alright. What's going on with this? The essence of chaos throws, flows through the army. Okay. Perhaps I shouldn't spend the time doing this, but I'm going to go steal his money. And then we're going to come down here. We'll get, to the, we'll get to the tree. We'll just say we got lost in the forest. Uh, sacrifices have been made here. They fill us with power. Plus five offense and defense for one battle. Awfully welcome. A bunch of loot and stuff. Let's check out this waterfall. I'm assuming it's going to be uh, plus movement, which is, of course, extremely welcome. Hey, look! Fae spirits. Fae spirits. This circle infuses any visiting wielder with power for their next battle. All right, we are very buffed up. And we finally found some shoes. Just been running around in the forest barefoot getting ringworm all this time. All right, that looks like an offering tree to me. Fae spirits, flying creatures of the tender wild, with bat-like wings, long claws, and sharp teeth swooped and buzzed before the offering tree. They wore strange masks, and screeched at Cecilia and her troops. Humans be gone! We wish to leave an offering for our trespass on the forest, as is stated in the ancient covenant between us. Stand aside, little spirits. I would do my duty. No humans! No, never! Spirits, do not trifle with me. I am stout heart, and by the agreements I seek to make amends. If you continue to impede my passage to the offering tree, I will draw arms and put you out of your misery. You are misery. Misery. So be it. You know, she should at some point she should notice that every interaction she has with everybody ends up going the same way, and she should ask herself some questions about that. So range five, deadly range three. Like, we're way less worried about their actual damage output, right? Two to four... Well, it's not that different, actually. I guess we will put them in front. Maybe maybe you could go here instead. Do something more like this. Okay. Could I be doing these battles uh, automatically? Pro uh, probably, actually. All right, how far do you move? I guess I want to move, like, not quite all the way up. I'd like to get some high ground. Oh, I moved far enough up that we're getting attacked anyway, didn't I? Well, whatever. We'll we'll retaliate. It'll be fine. Yeah, 
Yeah, none of them none of them can reach this position. And this way we have at least a little bit of high ground to work with. You, on the other hand, you're just getting shot immediately. So this gives me a three tile shot. I'm a little worried, like, from here, will I have a poor shot or perhaps no shot at all because of the rocks? One way to find out. Okay, shot blocked, minus 50% damage. Still, pretty good. It is a lot of crossbow bolts. Okay, none of them chose to, to get in there. I guess, you know, you're about to be in a pretty risky position there, friend. Show them who is the boss. Do I want to have him run around and... No, probably not. I want him to stay between the archers and the enemies at the very least. Okay, I think I'm being warned. He stopped when he got adjacent to enemies. I might be being warned that moving forward again would be uh, would be painful. I wanted to crush the three over here. Well, you know what? Seven to eight. He might actually just kill them. Yeah, he totally did. All right, we expect within deadly range we can just wipe a whole stack. Seems pretty solid. Good counterattack. Nicely done. Wow, they're actually, like, pretty solid melee combatants. Yeah, we might we might be better off using the, um, the crossbow just as, like, a thing you do on your closing turn. Uh, at this point, I feel like we probably ought to take command. We are reaching the full the full strength of our current command uh, um, command offering here. The offering tree was the most unusual tree Cecilia had ever seen. Her friend Vilia of Thorncliff had described them once, but it had not done them justice. The branches were smooth and glossy and seemed to be lit from within. The leaves tinkled like tiny bells in the breeze, and, most uncommon, the tree gave off the aroma of warm, spiced cider, like her mother would give her when she was small. Fay of the forest, for trespass upon your woods, we offer compensation. For these fay spirits slain, I ask forgiveness. They could not be reasoned with. Let our peace be everlasting. Okay, as the, as the offerings were presented, the forest around Cecilia grew quiet. Hopefully it was enough. I mean, we could do a little bit more than that. Plus three offense and plus three defense. And again, not uh, no, no listed duration. It's pretty exciting. There's a grove over there that we cannot reach, unfortunately. But it is curious. All right, back to the mission, I suppose. six rangers i mean we can take six rangers yeah okay it split them up the way i wanted it to and i'm assuming this is the the right direction let's go check out this tribute to creation all right more creation essence i don't even know if that's good or not i have no idea what <laughs> what spells we have or what essences they rely on Guarding the road was a large force of mercenaries hailing from the merchant states of Baria. Ba Baria, maybe. Turn back. The road is open for ore shipments from Flint Hills only. I see you are strangers to these lands, or you would know me as the lawful Baroness Stoutheart. I do not recall a declaration of war from the Barian city-states. Therefore, you are thieves and trespassers. What other crimes shall I add to the list? <laughs> We've committed no crimes. We are honorable mercenaries here on contract, merely following orders. Avoid contract, as it is not with me. You have my ore, therefore you are thieves. You will return it, tell me who hired you, and maybe I will ransom you back to your employers. We're not afraid to fight you, Stoutheart. But be warned, 
Our contract states that no one wearing stout heart colors are to be spared on the field of battle. Of course, if you turn around now, we can avoid all this. Never. You shall be treated as criminals, and my sword will deliver justice for breaking our laws. Then, unfortunately, we must battle. Okay, how many times are we... Uh, how many times are we going to stand around and say to each other, Ah, oh, it seems like it's time for battle now. Oh, yes, perhaps we should battle. Let's just spend a little bit more time considering this battle. Okay. We are being told that this is a, a fair difficulty battle. Not my big, not my, not my favorite thing. I do prefer unfair odds, generally. Yo, those are some, those are some long arms for real. Okay, well, uh, we got no spells, so I guess we're just going to do this the simple way. Right, I can't, I tried to click on my archers like it was, uh, like it was going to be that simple. So you're a musketeer. Okay, that's interesting. Don't love that. Let's, um, I guess just naively run at this fellow and see what happens. Okay, that could have been a lot worse. So it's probably worth running up to get deadly range and the high ground bonus. We don't have deadly range over here. Oh no, we do. We do just barely. I wish I had a better sense of whether this troop will be able to deal with that guy on its own. Because we have deadly range and high ground, I think. Yeah, uh, better safe. We might have been able to do it without without having to spend this archer's attack on it. Yep, that's a mighty big shot there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and take this shot. It was pretty clean. Uh, ooh, insect swarm. Okay, so this is create this is creation damage. Five damage and minus ten initiative. When you hit somebody's initiative, I think this is probably a pretty good opportunity to test this. When you hit somebody's initiative, does it move where they are in the current turn, or does it only have the ability? No, okay, it bumps them back like in the current turn. That's actually super useful. Um, and then we still have all this order initiative. So let's quicken as ever. Okay, we're not getting quite the outcome we wanted there. Uh, the... Yep, okay. Attacks of opportunity do exist. Now we've learned a thing. Four to six, or we can double up the damage by getting you into the deadly zone. Minus 50% plus 100%. Still, you know, on average, it's pretty good. I'm a little bummed out that the spells are attached to your character, not to your units. Because that doesn't leave, it doesn't leave a lot of ground for there to be like cool spell casting units. But let's not let's not have too many complaints about the system before we've even actually seen it. So offense is good defense, as I've said. Um, but I wonder, like range resistance, the not losing people as you're approaching feels really important. I don't know. I sure do like damage. Sort of a one track mind in combat. Not necessarily the greatest strategist. Well, it looks like some not necessarily awesome things have been going on up here. Cecilia's troops searched the smoking remains of Hope's Glade looking for survivors. The townsfolk had clearly put up a fight, and for that they had suffered. From the rubble they heard a moan, and they uncovered a gravely injured militiaman. That is a, just a big swell there. Lady Stoutheart, we held as long as we could. We had to retreat. They were too strong. Who did this? The Barians? A troop of Barian mercenaries marched on toward Barkspur, but it were knights that attacked us. Men of Arlian, setting fire to our homes, taking no surrender. All we could do was flee to the hills north of here. 
the wounded man tried to speak, then fell limp. His eyes glazed over as the last sliver of strength left his body. His essence is in the wind, but stout heart still stands. Come, there are survivors here yet. Let's search the hills before we journey south to Barkspur. It's time to put an end to this. Okay. Hills to the north. Look for survivors is not really optional in my opinion. Okay, stone and wood and gold. We don't even know what to do with most of this stuff. Presumably there's, you know, city building. We're pretty focused right now. Uh, I do have gloves on already. I know that. All right, wood and stone. What's going on up here? These buildings seem completely untouched. As they reached the top of the hill, they found a sturdy tavern and the soot-covered, injured, and scar uh, scared survivors of Hope's Glade. From among them, a minstrel stood and greeted Cecilia. Hail, do my eyes deceive? The Baroness of Stoutheart to grant reprieve. If you mean to avenge these foul knights, then we brave souls would join your fight. How long have you been waiting? He's just been sitting up here composing couplets. It's like she's gonna come by, and when she does, we really have to wow her, guys. And with your aid, Stoutheart will stand, returning peace and order to the land. Because Cecilia kind of has, like, a little bit she has bars. She wants, she needs people to believe she has bars. You're not allowed to tell her she doesn't. She'll kill you. All right. So we took on some, some people. We don't actually know what their abilities are. I should probably look at that. Fear no foe, plus five defense to friendly troops, spell damage resistance up as well. They give a couple of different essences. Yeah, okay, I mean, they seem fine. Just sort of keep them out of direct combat, I guess. All right, what have we not yet searched? There's a lot of wood and stone here considering that we don't have any use for it yet. All right. Uh, we have visited everything, including the tavern, even though it says we haven't. It probably just means we could go back there and hire more if we, uh, if we had space. Or, like, periodically the troops there refresh or something. A mystic hermit. The hermit shares their, order, uh, their knowledge of order magic one. Plus two order magic at the start of each round. Hold on a second. Some kind of anomaly. This gathering of essence strengthens any wielder who approaches it. Look at all look at all the essences. I assume that is all of the all of the essences you can have. I guess we're gonna get there the long way. Gazing across the lake, Cecilia saw the settlement of Barkspur. It was clearly occupied by another force of Barian mercenaries, this one led by a wielder. She readied her soldiers for the final battle to retake this region. Very dramatic. Uh, Y'all are going to have to wait a second, though. They can, <laughs> they can see us coming. Everybody knows it's happening. All right, Namander Breeze has run over. He wants to, he wants to get shit started. I cannot say that I am sad about this. Let's, uh, let's make it happen. So, Fear No Foe doesn't list a, um, like a maximum range or anything. So 10 health each with 33 defense compares here to like 18 health with 43 defense. And the shield, of course. Yeah, all of which is to say, I think we need to be careful with our minstrels. They probably, <laughs> probably are not going to stand up to combat super well, but also, if they can murder, it behooves us to get them a murder in. Um, what are you? This unit seems to be carrying a gun of some kind, like a bigger gun. That does worry me a little. Oh, it's a bagpipe. Okay, so they don't really have much in the way of range then. They just have the one unit of muskets. Let's see here. We could just, standing still, put the herd on these dogs. 
the thing is, like, I want to move forward enough to get deadly range on some of our enemies at least. As things stand right now, if I went up this way, nobody would be in position to challenge me in direct melee right away. But I would have to worry about um, the blocking terrain, I guess. So let me move up to here. I know this is going to make my life dangerous, but you don't get damage for free. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. Let's um let's just screw up your range, cloud your vision. And nobody else really moves all that far. I think we can afford to move the minstrels up. Honestly, like any any enemy who would attack the minstrels instead of attacking the archers is just doing us a favor. And then you move forward and try to finish them. Okay. Don't love the uh, don't love the sad dog sound, but you know, the dog is sad. To be fair. So we have a fury. Yeah, I feel like um, it's order and chaos. We have a ton of order. I think we can afford to put our troops in a fury here, and let's fuck some shit up. I didn't get in range of both of them. I hope that wasn't an error. So this guy's got retaliation range on us now, right? Obviously this one won't retaliate on account of he'll be dead. So maybe that's the focus. Or maybe we try to put away their muskets before they have a chance to shoot again. Hmm. Let me, let me defense buff as well here before I forget. These guys are pretty close to being up in the initiative order. I think I will just drop them. And then... Yeah, just run in there and do minstrel damage. Because I think between the, between the lot of our lesser troops, we can just... We can just do... Um, do enough via the magic of, again, quantity. Uh, I guess their muskets are about to get a turn. I probably should stop that from happening. Okay, so now we have an interesting question. We're intentionally not going to do much with this unit. Okay, so the, um, the crossbow units will reload their crossbows on a turn where they don't do ranged attacks, even if they do do a melee attack. This is the first battle that we've had that was long enough to see that that's the case. Um, but yeah, it's very good to know. So we can have them alternate like that. That makes that, that should make them very good skirmishing troops, actually. I'm pretty, pretty pleased with how effective they seem to be. After the battle, a beaten Nemander Breeze is brought before Cecilia. Wielder, we appeal to your honor and beg that we may negotiate a surrender. I am Nemander Breeze of the Quartz Battalion and a stranger to these parts. I concede the field and will withdraw my forces. You are indeed a stranger, Barian, or you would know by my colors that I am Baroness Cecilia Stoutheart. Seriously, I never stop talking about it. How have you not heard? Was it your weapons that armed the band or was it your weapons that armed the bandits who caused the uprising at my mines? Uh, there was a misunderstanding, Baroness. We were led to believe by our employer that they had a lawful claim on these lands. When we realized our betrayal, we had signed the contract. By the mercenary code, we could not withdraw our services. Yo, that's not a great code. Reveal to me your employer and their plans. If I am satisfied with your answer, I will spare you. But every Baron of your company must leave my, ma my lands immediately. It was Lady Hammond that hired us. The Topaz Battalion is sent to recover Ashbourne. We are grateful for your mercy, Lady Stoutheart. 
May this deal bring good fortune to each party. Ah, uh, this information is adequate. I will spare your life and instead send you to the prison in Castle Everkeep. There you may contemplate that honor might be worth more than gold. Corporal, this is your chance to redeem yourself for your error in the Tenderwild. Take two squads and transport Captain Nemander Breeze to Everkeep until we can arrange for his ransom. You can depend on me, Lady Stoutheart. That feels... That feels pretty grim. That feels like a pretty grim way to deal with uh, that situation. But okay. With Barkspur restored to Stoutheart rule of law, Cecilia gathered her troops once more and set out to pursue the Topaz Battalion and prevent the occupation of Ashburn. For this she would need the aid of Vilia of Thorncliff, Warden of Stoutheart and Cecilia's longtime friend. <laughs> That is quite loud. I might just, uh, just adjust that slightly. To crush rebellions and push back another upstart. Lady Helen claimed her settlement. Settlement. The slant rhyme is as old as time. I mean, it's the game's called Songs of Conquest. We should not be surprised that there are songs. All right, well, that's that's I think maybe a good a good sort of like first peek here. Uh, I think that right there is where we're gonna call it for today. We have some sense of what we're getting into. And I'm definitely excited to see more. I hope y'all are as well. Uh, when you come back next time, we are uh, embarking on Mission 2 in the Song of Stoutheart, The Responsibility of Rule. And I'm just going to go out on a, a limb here and assume it's going to be incredibly bloody. And we'll see you then. <laughs>